Hi guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about the torture of Pharisee spirits. The torture of Pharisee spirits that you as a Christian will, will have to go through. Religious spirits are going to hate this video. Now the Pharisees were religious leaders. Jewish religious leaders who were on earth when Jesus Christ was walking around as a human on earth. They taught the law, but inside they were wicked. It was all about appearances to them. They appeared holy, yet inside they were like dead men's bones. Wicked inside. Now, those were actual people, right? But they're actually are Pharisee spirits, too. Or you could call them religious spirits that come and bother born-again Christians. Now, on earth, what the Pharisees would do is they would accuse Jesus. They would accuse him. They'd be like, you wine-bibber, you glutton. They'd call him a child of the devil, all this horrible stuff. They'd be like, why are your disciples not washing their hands? And, and why are they eating on the Sabbath day? And, and Jesus would be like, well, why did you not honor my commandment about honoring your mother and father? You see, what the Pharisees do is they will strain out a gnat and swallow a camel, which is what Jesus said. What that means is they will nitpick little tiny things while they're completely wicked. This is what the, the Pharisee demons do to us, too. The spirits. For example, they went and said, you know, why are they not washing their hands? When Jesus was like, well, why didn't you say, why didn't you keep my commandments on honoring your mother and father? Why didn't you love? Why didn't you show mercy? Well, they're wicked. Accusers. It says in the Bible that the devil accuses us day and night before God. These are Pharisee spirits. Now, if you're new, if you're born again, you just came, the Pharisee spirits are going to be on you like white on rice. Man, they were on me like white on rice, I'll tell you. They'll make you think everything is a sin. You'll, you'll have no idea what's happening. They'll accuse you of everything. I remember I was talking to the man who helped me come to God, and I was like, is it okay if I, if I have a blanket on me, like when it's cold? And he's like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I'd be looking at a bag of chocolate chip cookies, or chocolate chips, and I would be like, I really want to eat that, but I'm not sure. I think it could be a sin. I better not do it. He'll literally accuse you and make you think everything is sin. <laughs> this is something he does. This video is going to be a lot about women. I believe it's fruitful for men to watch too, though. Now, I'm going to be saying uh, different scriptures, but I'm not going to say exactly where they all are. Just because on my computer it's hard to see every book and everything. So I'm just going to put them in the description for you to read if you'd like. This is 1 Timothy. Okay, in 1 Timothy it says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now, 
If you're a woman of God and you're born again and you think it's a sin to wear makeup, jewelry, you know, wear nice clothing, braid your hair like it says, wear gold or pearls, then you're on a lower level in God than I am. And that's not me being proud, that's just simply the truth. You're on a lower level. And the Pharisee spirits have de deceived you. They've deceived you into thinking it's a sin. That's not what this means. We are to dress modestly, as in don't have your breasts hanging out. I hope that's okay to say in front of brothers. I don't know how else to say it. Dress modestly and let it be the, the inward part of your heart that you focus on, not the out, outward appearance. It doesn't mean literally don't braid your hair because it's a sin, don't wear gold because it's a sin. I want to go to 1 Peter. This is 1 Peter 3. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they, may, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair or of wear, and of wearing of gold and of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Do you see what it says? It's saying, focus on the inward beauty of your heart, the hidden man of the heart, and not on the adorning. It doesn't mean it's sin to, to adorn yourself. I'm telling you, the Pharisee spirits and their man-made doctrines will go after women on this one like no tomorrow. That's what they did with me. Do you know it is suffering for a woman to not be able to make herself look beautiful? It's suffering. You can't wear makeup. You can't even wear jewelry. You can't even put earrings in your ears can't do your hair or wear pretty clothes, or do your nails. That's suffering on a woman. I can tell you 100% that is not of God. It's from Satan. Now, if you're one of God's daughters and you do this and you believe God's pleased when you do it and, and you do it unto him, I'm not to judge you. I'm not to judge any of my sisters here. I'm here to free you from Pharisee garbage doctrines of man. In Genesis, Abraham sent a servant to go find a wife for Isaac. Right? And the servant went and he found Rebecca and he, he, God pretty much showed him that that was going to be Isaac's wife. So what did he do? He put earrings on her. He gave her earrings and he gave her bracelets to honor her. God wanted him to do that. And then later, this is what he did. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebecca. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. This is honoring a woman to give her actually give her jewelry and have her wear it. When my husband comes to me, I would like him to, to buy me some jewelry. It would please me and honor me. This is an Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. 
He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Do you know when I was talking about how God, when he made Lucifer, he had jewels all over him? That was God. He gave him jewels to honor him before he fell. This is in Ezekiel when, when God is talking about Israel and how he has blessed Israel. It's a symbolic thing. He says, I clothed thee also with broidered work and shod thee with badger skin and I girded thee about with fine linen and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments and put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck and I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ears and a, a beautiful crown upon thine head. Thou was, thou was thou decked Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. God is saying, oh, I put bracelets on you, I put a beautiful crown on you, put earrings in your ears. That's actually of God. I am telling you, if God made me wear a head covering, no makeup, no jewelry, not be able to make myself look pretty, not do my nails, it would make me suffer a lot. And you know what happens with, with women that think they must do this, and it's a sin if they don't do it? They'll look at other sisters who wear makeup and like adorn themselves and they'll start thinking, look at how much I'm suffering over here by looking this way. I'm holier than them. It causes pride. And I'm telling you something. How will it glorify God for me to look that way, to look like I don't even take care of myself? And I'm not saying that for other women. I'm saying that for me. It would make me look like I don't take care of myself if I did that. I'm sure other women look great doing it. <laughs> but for me personally. You know, I talked to a, a... When I went to church, I used to go to a church building. And the pastor's wife, I talked to her about this. You know what she told me? She was like, I used to do that, actually. I used to only wear skirts. And didn't, didn't do my makeup or look nice. And one day, someone came and they were like, is that what a Christian looks like? And when she heard that, she knew it wasn't of God what she was doing. Because people viewed her as just not even taking care of herself. That's how the, that's how the world would view me if I didn't wear makeup or jewelry or did my hair. They'd be like, she doesn't even care about her appearance. Not that we should care what people think. And if you don't want to wear makeup and if you're uncomfortable with it, you don't have to. And I'm not saying you look bad. Please understand what I'm saying. Ladies, you can wear makeup. You can wear jewelry. You can adorn yourself. Make yourself look beautiful. And also do it for your husband too. There is grace and it is of God to wear jewelry. People would think, okay, well, makeup wasn't made from God. So what? Makes women feel more beautiful about themselves. There is grace and mercy for this. Pharisee doctrines. You know what I do? I say, you know, I'm going to wear my beautiful jewelry and my do my hair, wear my makeup, you know, wear my beautiful clothing. And Satan, you can shut your mouth. Go on, go slink back and your little snake back into your wall, the hole in the wall that you came from. Because you're under my foot and you can shut your mouth. Because there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And I'm under mercy and grace over here. Get back under my foot. 
That's how it is. You know how I was saying that Satan is the footstool of God? When you're born again, he's actually your footstool too. He's under your foot. That's why I just keep my helmet of salvation on. And I try to keep him under my foot. It's the same thing with music. You'd think, okay, you know, it's not Christian. Probably shouldn't listen to it. This is, this is the thing, okay? People will think, okay, I'm on the narrow road now. This is narrow. I better only listen to Christian music. I better keep my head in that Bible. I better not watch anything worldly. If I'm a woman, I better make myself look drab and un not as not attractive. I don't want to say unattractive. You know, not adorn myself at all, because this is narrow. And that's like not how it is, actually. God knows we live in this world. The narrow road, do you know what it is? It's, it's coming to Jesus Christ, having a relationship with him. Turning from evil, receiving the Holy Spirit. And fellowshipping with him, loving people and forgiving them, having mercy. All these things. That's the narrow road. You know there's some women, there's a woman and she, she would literally preach that it's if you have teddy bears or something like this, that's demonic. You should throw them out. There's another woman, and I'm not going to say these women aren't of God. There's another woman, and she'll teach that lace, wearing lace, is a sin. There's, there's women who come to me. They're like, God, show me we should not be wearing makeup or jewelry. And I'm, no, that wasn't God. That was a Pharisee demon, actually. This is all Pharisee garbage. It's not sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the whole music thing, do you know that God speaks to me through all different types of music? Very strongly. Sometimes I'll cry with how he speaks to me through different music. God is not a Pharisee. He's not legalistic. He's not an accuser. That's the devil. The devil's a Pharisee, literally. He's like a Pharisee. An accuser. God will speak to me through the music. It Literally, you could listen to dance music and worship him. Now, there's a different anointing. Uh, there's an anointing on certain Christian music that won't be on other music. But I'll even listen. There's like the, There will be music, and these people are not right with God. They're very in trouble with him, and I'll worship God to it glorifies him you know how God led me to watch Disney movies he spoke to me through the movies so strongly you know why he did that because I was so freaked out I was like oh that has magic in it I don't know And he literally spoke to me through them. These things are not sin. God will lead you. There are certain things that are sin. That we shouldn't do. The video is cutting off. I'll be back.